Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at inequality symbols and absolute values. Okay, let's start off with the number line. Now the number line is made up of three different parts. It's made up of negative numbers, positive numbers, and the origin. Now think about what the word origin means. Origin means where things start, where they come from. So your origin is always zero. All right, here I'm comparing uh, my coordinates A and B. Okay, I'll be talking about A compared to B. So A relative to B, if I notice here, A is less than B. Okay, and I know it's less than B because it's to the left of, of B. If you look at a number line, anything that's to the left has to be smaller than whatever's to the right. Here, I notice that A and B are right on top of each other. So, in this case, A is equal to B. In this last one, I still want to compare A to B, but A is to the right. So that, mean, that must mean that A is greater than B. All right, I put six problems up. I'll go ahead and pause it and fill in the blanks. Okay, tell me what sign, what uh, sign of inequality should go in there. Good luck. Alright, here are your answers. Hope you got them all right. Alright, here you're looking at A is less than B or A is greater than B. Now these are known as strict inequalities. These are strict because here you'll notice that A is less than B. Okay, that means that it cannot include B. For example, you have to say, um, you can say, I need everybody that is less than 55 years old that means that nobody in that group can be 55 years old everybody has to be less than 55 so you're making it strict here though look at what it's saying a less than or equal to b so here you're adding uh, something else these are called non-strict inequalities so with that same scenario if you're asking for people that are 55 or younger well that includes the people that are 55 also Okay, so you're not as strict, so these are non-strict inequalities. Here, I'm saying that A is greater than zero. Okay, that implies that my A's are all positive. Okay, anything that's greater than zero is going to be positive, especially if you look at the number line, you can see a little bit better. Here, I'm saying that A is less than zero. So, of course, this implies the opposite. It implies that A is negative. Anything that's less than zero is going to be on that negative side of the number line. All right, here there's two examples where I'm going to graph. Here we're asked to graph x greater than 4. Now notice how I'm always reading it from left to right. Okay, same way that you read your books, you read it from left to right. So uh, look at it like this. I'm actually saying any number that is greater than 4. So I want all numbers that are greater than 4. Well, here's my number line. And notice that I always show my arrows at the end and my origin. Okay, I always want to show those pieces. Now, my main number here is 4. I know 4 is on the right side. Okay, it's positive. So I show 4. And I notice that this is a strict inequality. So I'm going to put an open circle over that 4. Now, let's think about what this says again. All numbers that are greater than 4. Well, for them to be greater, they need to be on the right side. So, I'm going to go ahead and shade this in. And there, I graphed it. Let's look at this one. This one says x less than or equal to 5. So, this is saying all numbers that are less than or equal to 5. So, once again, my main number is 5. I go ahead and find 5. Once again, that's a positive number, so I know it's to the right side of zero. Now this though, this is a non-strict inequality. So, I know it includes five. So, not only am I gonna circle, am I gonna circle it, I'm gonna go ahead and shade it in. This lets me know that I'm including five, and now I either have to choose to, sh uh, to shade to the right or the left. Well, all the numbers that are less than five, are going to be to the left side. So I'm going to shade in 
all of this until I get to the end. There you go, that's how you graph inequalities. All right, here I have two problems for you. X greater than or equal to negative two and X less than four. Go ahead and grab these two problems and I'll have the answer for you in a second. your answers notice that this is a closed circle I bubble it in and this is an open circle okay I left it open okay hope you got them right okay. absolute values absolute values even though once you get used to them you don't have to use a number line anymore they actually do deal with the number line here this definition says that it is the distance of a given number from 0 to that given number so it, if we ask you to find the absolute value of the number 3 well, look how many units it is away from three. One, two, three. There. What about negative four? Okay. Even though it is negative four, we're just gonna count the units from zero to negative four. One, two, three, four. Four units. So the absolute value of negative four is four. Okay, so let's see what this means. The absolute value of a number a is denoted by the symbol bar a bar. Okay, so this is the absolute value of A, and is defined by the following rules. The absolute value of A is equal to A, so it stays the same if A is greater than zero. So if A is positive, what you have in here is positive, it stays the same, it doesn't change. And the absolute value of A is equal to negative A if A is less than zero. So if A is negative, you take the opposite of whatever's in here. Okay, let's check that out. All right, let's see what we have. The absolute value of negative three, now since negative three, okay, remember that's our A, since negative three is less than zero, okay, so it's negative, I'm gonna take the opposite of negative three. So remember the opposite is to take a negative. So negative negative three is three. The opposite of negative three is three. Simply, Absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. Okay, this is all the work you have to do. Okay, I put three questions up on the board. Go ahead and try them out. Go ahead and find the absolute value of these numbers. I'll have the answer for you in just a second. Alright, here are the answers. I hope you got them right. Alright, what if they're asking you the distance between two points. Well, the distance between points P and Q, okay, distance between points P and Q is the coordinate minus the other coordinate, okay, and we take the absolute value of that. Now, why would we take the absolute value of that is because you don't have a negative distance. Just like if I took a car ride from Miami to New York, it is whatever amount of miles. Now, when I'm coming back from New York to Miami, I don't subtract those miles. Okay, my distance is always positive. Okay, I'm always going somewhere. You don't have a negative distance. So, that's why we take the absolute value. And if you notice, it doesn't matter which one you subtract first, because the absolute value is gonna give us a positive answer anyways. All right, let's go ahead and work this one out. Here, I'm asking you the distance of P, Q. Here are my three different points. P, R, Q. So let's check that out. It should look like this. The absolute value, let's see the coordinate for P is negative 5, so negative 5 minus Q, which is 7. Okay. The absolute values act like a parenthesis, so I still have to do what's inside first. Okay, I don't mess with turning things positive until I have nothing left to do. Inside my parentheses, my absolute values, I have negative 5 minus 7. Well, that's negative 12. Is there anything left for me to do? No. So now I can take the absolute value. The absolute value of this is 12. So I know there's a distance of 12 units between P and Q. Okay, what about this one? The distance between Q and R. Why don't you try this one out, and I'll give the answers in a second. Okay, 
your answer should look like this. The absolute value of, ne of 7 minus negative 3. Now minus negative 3, because remember that turns into a positive, so this really means 7 plus 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. The absolute value of a positive number stays the same. So the absolute value of 10 is 10. That's your final answer there. That's all for today. Next time we'll look at the Pythagorean Theorem. See you next time.